I'd also like to recognize the presence of a, a, one of our interns, Albany County Controller intern, uh, who's been with us for a while now, and I'm not sure everybody has met him yet, but he's from Ireland, and he's been with us for the last six months, and this is his last meeting, and uh, he'll be leaving, go back to Ireland on Monday, but I'd like to recognize Shane Sullivan. Shane, stand up and let everybody see. And I'm going to tell you, I spent a little time with Shane and had lunch with him. And uh, he's a fascinating young man. He has a great knowledge of politics and government in Ireland. And he also has acquired great knowledge of the way we do things. And he told me he likes it here. So maybe we'll see him back someday. Shane, best of luck to you. Thank you for coming over. I'd also like to acknowledge... Uh, a, a real tragedy that occurred last week in the city of Cohoes that has affected many, many people. And I've been involved in emergency management for decades, and I have never seen anything like this in my life right here in our county. So I want to uh, thank, first of all, the firefighters who really put their lives on the line. It's really amazing that uh, nobody was seriously injured in that fire. Some apparatus did not survive the fire. Uh, some very expensive fire equipment was severely damaged, and, uh, but we can replace equipment. Uh, and the, the wrath of damage to about 33 buildings and about 100 units and the people that uh, we, you know, not only thank the firefighters, but the city officials who were on hand to help clean up and try to get some of those businesses back on track. And I, and I think we should, uh, there was some people right here in this room that were out there. Legislator Ethier was out there helping. Uh, city Director of Operations, Ralph Signoracci, uh, his full-time job as Director of Operations, he was out there. And... Uh, Maggie Alex, right here up front, is a code enforcement officer, and she was on the engineering team and went through, I think, every single one of those buildings. And uh, the work that they put in to get Cahoes back on track, at least to get the street open, is amazing uh, in the short period of time. And they've got a long way to go. So we need to keep the city of Cahoes and the business people and the residents that were displaced in your thoughts. And I know there's going to be a lot of fundraisers that are going to be held in the, last, in the next uh, few mo weeks and months. And, uh, you know, if you, if you can, please support them because they're going to need our support. So with that, I'd like to ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And I'll ask it to be led by Mr. Ethier and Mr. Signoracci from the city of Cahos. Thank you. I, I guess we have a great surprise here, an unexpected surprise. Mark and Jack Yonnelly from Lodges are here, present with us tonight. And I'd like to call them forward, along with the city legislators, and we'll present the proclamation tonight. 
And we're still going to have a celebration tomorrow at 3.30, so uh, could you please come forward and we'll present the proclamation. I don't think there's hardly been anyone 
that has not stepped foot in that store at least one time. Again, okay, congratulations. Thank you. Preston, Bullock, Bergdorf, Chapman, Clay, Clinahan, Camisso, Kraus, Cunningham, Dawson, Damalowitz, Drake, Duncan, Ether, Feeney, Fine, Grimm, Higgins, Hogan, A. Joyce, R. Joyce, Lakakis, Lockhart, Mariello, Mayo, McKnight, McLean Lane, Mendick, Miller, O'Brien, Reinhardt, Signorachi, Simpson, Smith, Stevens, Touche, Tunney, Ward, Here. Willingham. 38 present. Very good. I'll note that additional sponsors have been filed with the clerk. We'll move right on to previous business. Okay, do I, can I have a motion to take, uh, I'm not as unorganized as I seem like tonight. Can I have a motion to uh, take 525 out of order? And 526? Do we have a second? All those in favor? Those opposed? Motion to take 525 and 526 out of order is passed. Read resolution 525, please. Confirming the appointment of a member to the Albany County Airport Authority. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes. Mr. Sam Frasina is in attendance tonight. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Albany County Land Bank Development Corporation. All those in favor of Resolution 526 signified by say aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution passes. Passes and Mr. Uh, Eugene McPherson Sr. Is he present here tonight? If not, I don't see him. Congratulations, Mr. McPherson.
Under previous business, resolution 480, please. Authorizing the cancellation and chargeback of unenforceable delinquent real property tax liens in the city of Albany. Please note that the title says the town of Colony, it should be the city of Albany. The resolution is, is proper in its form. So just all we're doing is changing the title on, on the agenda to the city of Albany. All those in favor of 480? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes. Thank you. Under current business, 486. Authorizing an agreement with Care Transitions Network for people with serious mental illness and amending the 2017 budget. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution passes, 487. Authorizing the Albany County Department of Mental Health to join the Capital Region Behavioral Health Care Collaborative. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Resolution passes, 488. Authorizing the acceptance of grant funding and an agreement with the New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services regarding the 2017 Emergency Management Performance Grant. Please note Mr. Joyce's extension. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes 489. Authorizing the acceptance of grant funding from the New York State Governor's Traffic Safety Committee regarding the special traffic options program for driving while intoxicated. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution passes 490. Authorizing an agreement with the New York State Unified Court System regarding court security for the Family, Supreme, and County Courts. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution passes 491. Authorizing the submission of a grant application to the New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services regarding a public safety answering points operations grant. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution passes 492. Authorizing the submission of a grant application to the New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services regarding the 2017 HAZMAT grant. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution passes. 493. Authorizing the submission of a grant application to the New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services regarding the 2017-2018 statewide Interoperability Communications Grant. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes. 494. Authorizing the Department of Health to consider out-of-county applicants for the position of Director of Public Health Nursing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes. 495. Approving the Department of General Services Collective Bargaining Agreement with CSEA Local 1000 Department of General Services Unit and amending the 2017 Albany County Budget. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes 496. Approving a collective bargaining agreement between the Albany County Sheriff's Office and the United Professional and Services Employee Local 1222 Emergency Medical Services Unit. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes 497. Amending the 2017 Sheriff's Office Budget. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes 498. Amending the 2017 Department of General Services Budget. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? <coughs> Resolution passes 499. Authorizing an agreement with Capital District Regional Planning Commission regarding regulator improvement projects in the cities of Cohoes, Waterville, and the village of Green Island and amending the 2017 Albany County budget. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes. Four, 500, please. Amending the 2017 Department of Children, Youth, and Families budget. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution passes 501. Amending the 2017 Department of Residential Health Care Facilities budget. Mr. Cunningham. 
happy to be as a co-sponsor. Absolutely. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes 502. Bond resolution of the County of Albany, New York, adopted December 4th, 2017, authorizing the undertaking of various capital projects for the Times Union Center, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $6,035,000 appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $6,035,000 of serial bonds of said county to finance said appropriation. One roll call, please. Beston? Here. Bullock? Here. Burlock? Aye. Chapman? Aye. Clay? Here. Clinton? Commissa? Yes. Krause? Yes. Cunningham? Yes. Dawson? Yes. Demolowitz? Yes. Drake. Yes. Duncan. Yes. Ether. Yes. Feeney. Yes. Fine. Yes. Graham. Yes. Higgins. Yes. Hogan. Yes. A Joyce. Yes. R Joyce. Yes. Lacacus. Yes. Lockhart. Yes. Mariello. Yes. Mayo. Yes. McKnight. Yes. McLean Lane. Yes. Mendel. Yes. Miller. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Reinhardt. Yes. Signorachi. Yes. Simpson. Smith, yes. Stevens, yes. Touche, yes. Tunney, yes. Ward, yes. Willingham. Yes. 38, yes. 38, nothing. Bond resolution passes. Resolution 503, when you're ready. Bond resolution of the County of Albany, New York, adopted December 4th, 2017, authorizing various capital improvements for county facilities stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $2,450,000, appropriating said amount therefore and authorizing the issuance of $2,450,000 of serial bonds of said county to finance said appropriation. Roll, 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 Beston, Bullock, Bergdorf, Chapman, Clay, yeah. Clinahan, yes. Commisso, yes. Krause, yes. Cunningham, yes. Dawson, yes. Demolowitz, yes. Drake, yes. Duncan, yes. Ethier, yes. Feeney, yes. Fine, yes. Grimm, yes. Higgins, yes. Hogan, yes. A. Joyce, yes. R. Joyce, yes. Lacacus, yes. Lockhart, yes. Mariello, yes. Mayo, yes. McKnight, Yes. McNeen, McLean Lane. Yes. Mendick. Yes. Miller. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Reinhardt. Yes. Signorachi. Yes. Smith. Yes. Stevens. Yes. Touche. Yes. Tunney. Yes. Ward. Yes. Willingham. Yes. 38. Yes. Zero no. On resolution passes. Five <coughs> Bond resolution of the County of Albany, New York, adopted December 4th, 2017, authorizing various capital improvements for the Department of Public Works and the Department of General Services, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $8,147,000, appropriating said amount therefore and authorizing the issuance of $8,000,000. 1,147,000 mm -hmm. of serial bonds of said county to finance said appropriation. Beston, Bullock, yes. Bergdorf, yes. Chapman, Clay, yes. Clinahan, yes. Commisso, yes. Krauss, yes. Cunningham, yes. Dawson, yes. Demolowitz, yes. Drake, yes. Duncan, yes. Ethier. Yep. Feeney, yes. Fine, yes. Grimm, yes. Higgins, yes. Hogan, yes. A. Joyce, yes. R. Joyce, yes. Lacacus, yes. Lockhart, yes. Mariello, yes. Mayo, yes. McKnight, yes. McLean Lane, yes. Mendick, yes. Miller, yes. O'Brien, yes. Reinhardt, yes. Signorachi, yes. Smith, yes. Stevens, yes. Touche, yes. Tunney, yes. Ward, yes. Willingham, yes. 38, yes, zero. Fine resolution passes, thank you. 
Resolution 505. Authorizing the refund of real property taxes in the town of Clemens. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Resolution passes 506. Authorizing the conveyance of various parcels of real property to the Albany County Land Bank Corporation. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes 507. Providing annual salary increases for the county clerk. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes 508. Authorizing the conveyance of real property located at 22 Hammond Road in the town of Knox. All those in favor, Mr. Uh, Stevens? Yeah, I was just curious. Uh, did, did this go to Land Bank, or was the chance for it to go to Land Bank? No. <laughs> uh, and the reason for that is that I believe there's a, uh, the taxes would be paid in full. Double right. the taxes would be paid in full. Any public notice on it? Pardon? Public notice that it was available? I, I do not know that, personally. Mr. Burton. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I almost I don't know if anyone else is going to speak to the process here, but since our in our backup material there was a letter sent to you on uh, on November 9th, mm -hmm. uh, which was not that long ago, with an offer to purchase uh, the land for sixty thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars from a corporation are on the Washington Avenue extension uh, that I'm not familiar with. Um, but this, I, I was not at the meeting, but I understood it was added to an audit and finance committee agenda uh, a week or so later and was re reviewed by audit and finance. I mean, I'm not sure what our process is on how we deal with parcels of land, but I understood that land was going to go to the land bank, and uh, that generally when there's property that's subject to foreclosure, there's a public notice that then is available, or that it's offered to neighbors, uh, and that there are other uh, steps that make the process transparent and fair and open to all. Mm -hmm. And since this letter unfortunately, unfortunately went to you, Mr. Chairman, saying I'd like to buy this parcel of land, please tell me if this offer is acceptable uh, and, and please get back to me. Uh, could you tell, I mean, is this the process that people would go to to buy a piece of land in Albany well, County? That, that is the process, a lot of times I do get letters and I forward them to go through the process. Now, the state law authorizes this legislature to handle land transactions and buildings, and there's a lot of different ways we can handle them in the best interest of Albany County. Uh, some that we feel should go to the land bank, we give to the land bank. Uh, most of the properties that we convey, we very seldom get our the full taxes back, never alone, never mind double. But this body is authorized with 20 votes to convey properties, and we do that quite frequently. And most of the time, without getting double the, the outstanding taxes on it. I understand that, Mr. Chairman. I just, how do we know that there isn't someone willing to spend, to pay $70,000 for this land? I, they have to come forward. Is it, up to an in, is it up to an individual to come forward and say, is that piece of land for sale? Doesn't, doesn't a municipality generally have some sort of <coughs> public notice so that it's Transparent. The, the law provides that we are authorized to convey land, to sell land uh, in many different ways. This is one of them by resolution. That's, that's our duty. Okay. I, I, I appreciate the position that you're in, Mr. Chairman, and the fact that uh, this letter went to you and it moved expeditiously through the process, and that is, I guess, within our 
our ability to do. But well, it, it did go through the audit and finance committee first, which is part of the process. As, as a, that's right, as a late addition. Uh, and uh, do, do we know what this land's going to be used for? Like it's being owned by a corporation. I do not know. Do we know who the principles of the corporation are? No. I, I do not. Well, I, I do. I believe you know, too. Well, I don't know because <laughs> there, is, there is a name here that I don't want to be wrong. Uh, I don't know if it's the same person I know by that name because I know there are three or four people with that name. Okay. So that's why I'm. I, I do not know. I, I do know the name. I do not know exactly who it is either, but I believe you do. Well, I, I please, I sincerely do not. Okay. Uh, but uh, anyway, Mr. Chairman, I'll be uh, voting no on this on the basis of transparency. And I believe that if anybody here is really interested in uh, the transparency in land sales in Albany County, that there should be public notice, there should be offering to neighbors, uh, uh, there should be an appraisal. There's, I understand there's not an appraisal here. Um, Mr. Bergdorf, I, I don't disagree with everything you said, but this okay. legislative body is authorized by law to say yes or no to an offer that is made to this body. To me as chair, I, I sent it to the Audit Finance Committee for review. The Audit Finance Committee reviewed it, and I believe it was passed unanimously, Mr. Chair. Yes. It was unanimous. It was, it was sent to this body with a favorable recommendation. It's up to us to make a determination on it. I uh, appreciate your position, Mr. Chairman. I've stated how I intend to vote on this. Okay, no, very good. Mr. Mr. Drake. Mr. Chairman, I just want to add some clarity here because I think we all remember in February 2014, we created the land bank to this body, and I think I sponsored it. Yes. But beside that, all the county does have a real property office which is headed up by a man named Mr. Jeffrey Neal. Mr. Neal works for the county executive. They process all land matters in Albany County. Certain lands are picked out for the focus development groups of Arbor Hill, South Hill, and West Hill. If you all search your bed desk today, you'll probably find a copy of the recent publication that was put together by the Capital District Regional Plan Commission, which talks about the creation of the land bank and what our purpose is. It's not saying that the land bank handles every piece of real estate that comes to Albany County. Mm -hmm. Certain properties do go to the county executive and his staff in Albany County, real property office. Maybe you should talk to Mr. Jeffield, see what he knew about this property and where it is. He knows about all properties that Albany County does about. Thank you, sir. I, I just want to add that when we send the parcel to the Albany County land bank, we, we do not get anything for it. We don't get back taxes. They, whatever they sell it for, they receive. Uh, this is an opportunity to convey a piece of property to a private <coughs> buyer for double what the taxes are. And my understanding is that a great portion of this property is wetland. So it isn't really developable. But with that, Mr. Drake. Uh, you, you mentioned, Mr. Chairman, that when we give a property to the land bank and they sell it, we don't get anything back? We, we do not get the tax back. But we had a meeting. Get the sale <laughs> back. But we did have a meeting with Mr. Zarenko, the director of the land bank this evening, and he said that we do. It's based on a calculation of the outstanding taxes. He wasn't clear on the, you know, the exact map, but that there, there is an apportionment of the sale proceeds over $30,000, right? So this property would qualify as one such property. We we get a I believe we get a portion of the proceeds, but it's not certainly not the taxes, the amount of taxes. In this not. case, double the amount right. of taxes. Not. So and if it's a wetland, that the land bank is meant to either redevelop or repurpose property and get it back into the tax right. roll. Well oh, I just I want to clarify. I don't I don't believe that this is a buildable property. It may or may not be. Do we have a valuation then? Or some kind of survey or, or a wetland delineation or anything like that that might specify whether or not it is? I, I don't know the answer. Uh, we don't have an appraisal. I think that's been established. We don't have any other bids, right? 
There was no other interest. No other property. Property. Was the property advertised anywhere? I don't believe so. That was a letter sent to me, and we had an opportunity as a legislature to decide whether or not we want to sell that piece of property. Is there a hurry to sell this property, Chairman, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Is there any reason we have to decide this month? It's can up we, to this body. Can we take that back to the committee and ask some more questions? It's, you know, we're, we brought this, it's on the agenda. I see no reason to vote on it tonight. If this body, it's up to this body to decide how they want it. Well, I was going to suggest that maybe that would be a good resolution because uh, certainly, and, and again, just having met with Mr. Zarenko, he pointed out that both the land bank and the county, it doesn't cost any money to hold a piece like this because we don't have to mow it or shovel it or or, or board it up or do anything like that. So I think, you know, there's, there's some questions raised. It, it probably couldn't hurt to, to give this some little time to answer some questions because it wouldn't cost the taxpayers any money to hang on to it. And certainly, um, uh, John Nick LLC, you know, as a going concern might be around in the next couple of months if, if that's still a viable sale. And maybe in the meantime, we could discuss, if you come back to the committee, discuss, you know, are, are we gonna offer this out to the public to see if there might be somebody who'd be willing to pay more? And the reason I, I say that is because while it may be double the outstanding taxes, our real property foreclosure process, including the land bank as an sort of a affiliate, if you will, operates at a loss. Of course, everything we do is at a loss. So we want to maximize the return we can get. I think this body could agree that if, if the property would happen to be worth 120,000, we'd like to get that. So from where I'm standing, I think we want to at least establish what that value might be and or see if there are any competitive bidders. So I'd like to see it go back to the committee for that reason. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that. Mr. Steve. Yeah, I would ask it to go back to the committee too, and then maybe we can talk to Mr. Neal. And the neighbors. You know, and good. anybody else too that would be interested in the property. Very good. Mr. Edu. Sean, you send this to the one finance to do you notify do we notify all the legislators of this? Those uh, agendas are posted on the website, and there is no disclosure to the legislators. It's our duty to know that. Do you think it might be more feasible if we send all the legislators a letter saying when this comes up? This, this, uh, said that another place that ever, uh, this, this matter has been on this agenda. It was discussed in caucus. I don't see if there was nobody in our caucus. Oh, I know. There probably isn't. Just right. a, I'm just thinking. If we all know ahead of time what's taking place, we will be talking about it now to do all the homework before we got here. Is, yeah, that this, what looking, is that what you're looking for? This has been on two agendas this year. Yeah. We'd just like to say go back to the committee and get some of these answers. Questions yeah, answered. I understand go back to the committee. I'm talking about the pro, that for that to happen in the future. If we all know ahead of time, we wouldn't have these discussions. It's been on two agendas this year. Oh, I know it's been on two agendas. We've got 17 agendas. Yeah. What I'm saying is, What's the harm in sending everybody a letter for what this is all about? That's all. I'd just like to just take a little exception to transparency. I mean, we take everything. Everybody knows uh, that this was on the agenda. Uh, it, was, it, it was talked about at, at, at the committee. Uh, the committee was open to the public. I talked to you before the meeting about this property. Uh, you know, to see if it was a uh, developable piece of property. Yeah, but you, you also, I asked the question, was it offered to the public? And we could give yeah. you that answer. Well, it's been, it's been around for months since we got it. You know, if it goes back to the committee, and it goes back to the nothing's going to change other than 30 days. So, but, you know, it, it was out there. And, and to say that nobody knew anything about it, uh, in this day and age, uh, the way we take everything and televise everything, you can't use that excuse no more. You have to find something else because everything's transparent. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Berger. Uh, not to belabor this point, but <coughs> when I talk about transparency, mm -hmm. I was not making an allusion to the Audit and Finance Committee. Okay? What I am saying. It's kind of interesting to use the words that you just used. You said, this has been around for months. Well, in actuality, there's an offer less than a month ago to the chairman. So from a transparency point of view, this has been around for about three and a half weeks. So not months. Maybe you knew about it for months. Maybe others knew about it for months. 
Maybe Mr. Neal knew about it for months. Uh, I'd like to talk to the county executive's office and see whether or not they had a recommendation <coughs> for what to do with this land. Because, as Lucy said, the county executive's office makes recommendations on every one of our vacant parcels. Well, is there, is there a letter from the county executive's office backing this up? Do they think this is the right thing to do? What due diligence did they take to dispose of the property? That's the kind of transparency that, that I am talking about. Mm -hmm. I, I fully endorse the transparency yeah. that has been used in audit <coughs> finance, because there's never a question that we have asked that anybody was afraid to give us the correct answer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Mr. Uh, C. I make a formal motion and we take a roll call vote. Absolutely. Mr. Manning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have set a second. Yep. Thank you. Does it bother anybody that we have a piece of property that supposedly has been out there for a while and we have somebody who walks up and who wants to pay twice what the outstanding taxes are? That tells me this is a valuable piece of property. Otherwise, they'd be giving you something closer to what the taxes are because they could get by with just that. As my colleagues have mentioned, there was no public notice that this property was available. We have not gone out and, and sought out a, a fair market appraisal. Why are we in such a hurry to sell this thing if it has that kind of value? And we should find out what the real value is. I see no harm to this legislature by postponing this. And as you point out, Mr. Chairman, we have a responsibility to get as much value as we can out of our properties that we set up. <coughs> well, let's follow through on that. Let's find out what this property is really worth. Let's do our homework on this before we vote to sell it to the first guy who sends us a letter. Thank you, thank, Mr. Thank Chairman. You, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Reinhardt. I, uh, Which, uh, I remind you all, we do have a motion before it should be entertained, but I'm being cordial. Thank you. Um, I, I want to try to characterize this a little bit differently. Um, I, 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 you know, Mr. Stevens tells me that nobody in Knox knew that this was on the market. Um, I think that's a very important issue, whether that's, you know, the process that, that Paul Bergdorf was talking about with, 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 with due notification, whatever. It seems to me we should always be thinking about our, is there an interest in the community to do something with the property, any property like this that we have, whether it's for the land bank or whether it's for a redevelopment. We, we want redevelopment to be done in the context of what the, the community wants. I think that's an important issue here. Also, I totally agree with what Mr. Mendick is saying, that hey, if this were a, a family asset for anybody in this room, and, you know, maybe it's your parents' house or, you know, a relative. Somebody's inherited something, and now they're, they're going to go out and they're going to sell it. And they say, oh, we, you know, somebody called and said, hey, we'll offer you this much for it. Well, wouldn't you want to say, has it been appraised? Is there an interest? Is there a market interest? And let's, let's get what it's worth. Um, I have to confess, this is an old family story. This happened to my family, not, not my generation, my parents' generation. My parents were, were my, my dad was off in World War II in Guam. Uh, he was a Marine doctor doing the island jumping towards Japan. His, his, his brother was in, in Moscow as Hitler was approaching. My grandmother sent a letter about a piece of property and said, hey, we'd like to, you know, my, my lawyer says I should sell this for $6,000, what do you think? Um, and they, both wrote back and said, no, don't sell, you know, find out what it's worth. Uh, unfortunately, this was World War II, and the property was in Lake Tahoe, and it was sold. It was sold for $6,000. Um, it's a terrible story, and there's more to it which anybody wanted. Here's the detail. <laughs> It, it was just, it's, this is an example of where, you know, let's, I say, let's wait 
at least a month and find out. I mean, I'd like to say, hey, let's go to Knox and find out if, if, if the community has an interest the same way Shenandoah wants to preserve that land next to the school. I mean, I don't know this property myself. I don't know it, the wetlands are, are, you know, could be a park or, you know, something like that. But let's, let's at least give the community a chance to, to say, this is how we see this property being used, rather than selling it to the first person that steps up and makes an offer. I don't think that's due diligence. I don't think that's our judiciary responsibility. Thank you. Mr. Um, Krauss, this is the last one, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and not to belabor this. Ms. McKnight mentioned Mr. Neal. I'm not familiar with Mr. Neal. I do not know the process by which the county in that particular office reviews these types of properties. I don't know if there are 10 or 10,000. Mm -hmm. Maybe if anyone knows. It. There, there are many. There are many. More than 10, um, less than 10,000. It, it would seem to me that in this particular instance, and I don't have the information on this, but it appears that the particular person who was interested was probably looking for something that was available for whatever reason, did the research, found this was available, and sent you a letter. Whether or not that is the best way to handle it is open for discussion, but evidently Mr. Neal's office has not taken the time to make this a priority for whatever reason. And maybe it's because there are lots of problems like this and they just haven't got around to it. So I'm, whether or not this gets acted upon tonight probably is not all that important. But I think moving forward, um, we don't want to find ourselves in the position of having to call upon a review for every single piece of property like this because that's what that office is there for. Probably would have been helpful if we had had some notice from that office that this has come to our attention. And we're going to, we think this is the best way to dispose of the property. That might have been helpful and maybe it would have answered a lot of the questions that were raised here tonight. No, I, I understand that. And, I, and I totally respect the opinion of every legislator in this room. But this body as a whole is authorized by law to convey property as we see fit. And I, and I understand it. I'm not arguing that or saying that we shouldn't have that authority. Um, I just think that there's some confusion here as to how all of this happens. Yeah. I know that, you know, I, again, I, I don't know the process Mr. Neal followed. It's, it's very unusual for, for the chair. I receive a lot of letters, letters regarding conveyance of properties. Very unusual to receive an offer for double what, what is over the taxes. If that's what you're getting at. Thank okay. you. I, I, I was going to cut off the speaking. Is it relevant? Yeah, I, 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 You're always relevant, Mr. Higgins. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, by the way, on recent I just like to say, this district is a property entity. You are a citizen of Mr. Stevens? Yes. Okay. Thank you. 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 Yes. And then my follow-up question to you, as the legislator who represents this particular area where this property is cited, what would you like to see done? Because I'm prepared to honor your wishes as the person who represents this piece of property in your district. If there's concerns in your district, and it's relevant enough to you, and you want to hold this up for a month or two, I'm willing to support that. I had this happen to me in my district four, five, six years ago uh, with the brownstone that was collapsing. Where the woman came in at the last minute, she bought this property back from the county, and it sits there to this day, empty, a nuisance to the neighbors on both sides. You know, I thought that was wrong. If you have a problem with this, I'm prepared to support you. Yeah. That's, that's what we asked for, to go back to the committee to answer, answer the questions. Why, you know, was the public truly notified? <coughs> Land bank option. Uh, you know, nobody raised about that. Appraisal on property. I was told. It's your call. It's your district. That's, that's what I remember. We have a motion to appoint. I just have one question, Mr. Chair. I, I'm in a very, I will I'll, I'm in the holiday quick. spirit. Uh, the land valuation here and the tax valuation, uh, are those market value or is that sometimes? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part of it. I, I apologize. And uh, maybe our, our chair will have quite a chance to answer this. The land valuation, is that market or is that? 
uh, you know, how sometimes on your tax bill it's 62% or whatever market value would settle, which is what my home is assessed at. I, I don't know yeah. if that's market or. Is it? Is it a, a <laughs> If it's going to assess that, it's not market. That's not the land value, no. That's a, that's a, it's an unequalized assessment. I got, I got the assessor right in front of me here. It's market. It is not market. It is assessed value. And you have to plug in the equalization rate. Which I, I know, I don't know what the equalization rate is up there. I don't think it's 30. Well, I think it's 0.5. I'm told. It's less than 1%. Less than 1%. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Bullock, you haven't spoken yet. I just want to, I requested during uh, you know, the budget review a list of all the vacant and abandoned properties from the office. And I haven't seen it yet. I'd like to get that. I think it's really important that we know every single property that this county owns. So if I could you know, make another request so I can get that material. Do you want that in paper form? Well, I asked for it in, in, in forms that, that on the computer that wouldn't uh, follow paper, you know, so that we could look for it. And everybody was agreeable. Am I right, Gary? Did we I, will, yes, you did. Absolutely. We will ask for that, Mr. Bullock. That's, that's all I have. It is very lengthy. I will, I will warn you. Right, so, all right, Mr. Stevens, yes. then just for driving. Uh, yes, for, for clarification, I will be voting no on this resolution. Okay. And I would like to ask for a motion to uh, send this back to the committee. Okay, but I already have a motion for I understand that. I'm just asking for the motion. Okay. I'll second the motion. Okay, but I already have a motion to vote on it. I'm sorry. Mr. Drake. Thank you for your continued forbearance, Mr. Chair. <laughs> the uh, just you know coming from a person in the real estate industry, I, I thought I might clarify for those who may have quite not quite as much acumen as, as the assessors, etc. So the assessed value is a is the valuation placed upon it by the assessor in the town or the county, and that's by you know <clears throat> the value used to calculate your tax liability, etc. Market value though is what's known as an appraisal or can be determined by an appraisal. So many people confuse assessments with appraisals. They are two different things. Appraisals are intended to reflect the market value at a particular point in time, whereas the assessment can carry the property for upwards of 10 years before a reevaluation is done, if that helps anybody. Correct. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. All right, roll call, please. Bastin. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Bartoff. No. Mr. Chairman, clarification, please. What are we, are we voting? Um, voting on the resolution. We, we had a, a motion for a roll call on the original resolution before the motion to send it back to the committee. So I'm sorry, we are voting on the resolution. Oh, and okay. I, thank you. Thank you. Is that what you're voting on? Is everybody clear on that? Well, let me start over again just to make sure. <laughs> on the resolution, the original resolution. I'm going to start over again. Besden? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bergdorf? No. Chapman? Clay? Yes. Clinahan? No. Comiso? Yes. Kraus? Yes. Cunningham? No. Dawson? No. Demolowitz? Yes. Drake? No. Duncan? Yes. Ethier? Yes. Feeney? Yes. Fine? Yes. Graham? No. Higgins? No. Hogan? Yes. A. Joyce? No. R. Joyce? Yes. <coughs> Lacacus? No. Lockhart? Yes. Mariello? No. Mayo? No. McKnight? Yes. McLean Lane? No. Mendick? No. Miller? Yes. O'Brien? No. Reinhardt? No. Signorachi? Yes. Smith? No. 
Stevens. No. Touche. Yes. Tunney. Yes. Ward. Yes. Willingham. No. Twenty-one yes. Twenty-one yes. Twenty-one to seventeen motion passes. Thank you. <laughs> Resolution five oh nine, please. Authorizing the conveyance of ten thirty-one Broadway in the city of Albany. Uh, I'd like to table that. Anything of relevance you want to speak about? Or? <laughs> no, I think we're going to table it. I think some more information is needed. We can back it. That's what we heard for 508. Pardon? Is this for Are you serious? Wait, wait, wait. Absolutely. This is 509. I can always make it. Is it going to go back to the Because I'll save my salient points for that. It's going to come back here on the 18th. On the 18th? Mm -hmm. So is it going to go back to the committee process or just the table? No, I believe there's information. There's money. The, the, the uh, down payment has been paid, I guess. It's what? It hasn't been paid yet. It's a prior loan. Well, so we sent it back to committee, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I Because there is no like, committee. I, I would like to make a motion to send it to committee. Pardon? Oh, yeah. There is no committee. That's true. I'd like to make a motion to send it back to finance. Okay, but what we're doing is waiting for a check sure, from, the, sure. uh, from the previous owner. This, you know. Which is commonplace. This, this property here, 509, mm -hmm. this is nearly a half a million dollars in back taxes. Mm -hmm. And the previous owner sat on this property. For years and years and years, and let it go into neglect and decay while the warehouse district in the city of Albany, some would argue, is undergoing a renaissance. And the reason why they want it back now is because this building, which we've taken from them, is right next to Druthers, which is seeking a major expansion in the city of Albany. Okay. That's why they want it back. They sat on it for years, didn't pay their taxes, they're bad neighbors, and you know, I see no reason why this is another one of these examples, but these people in the city, throughout the county, let their properties deteriorate to the point where they're unsalvageable. And just because they show up at the last minute with a check, you're going to pay them back for it? I mean, to me, that's insane. So I think we should send them back to the committee, drive them in here, find out what happened to them for the last six years, what evidence to paying their taxes, you know, and, and have them justify to us why they should get the property back. Because it's offensive to me as a taxpayer that, you know, this is happening. You know, there's a reason why they want this down. Because it's worth a lot of money, Mr. Higgins, set a motion? Yes, absolutely. Do we have a second? Second. I got it. I'd like to be a speak, Mr. Drake, did you want to speak? Yes, sir, I would. I, in, the, in the tenor of Mr. Higgins' rant, I'd like to continue the rant, which is, you know, to be candid, we're, we're sending a message that this is okay. That you can, I can buy a piece of property, Mr. Chairman. I can. Leave it by the wayside for as long as I want, interest free, well not interest free, we're charging interest. But still, we don't have to come up with our money out of pocket. So the cash flow line business carries on. And then when the times are a changing, I'll just buy it back. Now if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if any of you used to participate in these Albany County auctions before we did the land bank, but you couldn't buy it back if you were the defaulting landowner. Now why are we allowing that today? I, I think it's obscene. It, it's an insult to the taxpayers. I think we have a motion to send it back to committee. We do, but this speaks to a bigger problem, Mr. Chairman, which is that we need to get this under control and determine what policy and procedure is going to be. Because I, for one, cannot condone something like that. Unless we have an appraisal of the property, maybe we find out it's worth 200 grand. Okay, well now we're in the driver's seat as the county taxpayers. But what if Mr. Higgins is correct? And if, in fact, Brothers wants to buy this for $1.8 million? I mean, we don't know that, but I'm being a little facetious, right? But the point is, we don't know. So why aren't we doing our due diligence as accountants? Why aren't we getting a letter from Jeff Neal or getting a letter from 
you know, the executive's office saying, we've appraised the property, we're getting twice the value, and that's why it's okay to sell it back to the defaulting landowner, who, by the way, put us in this position in the first place, while the county taxpayers went without those funds for a decade. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. DeMolis. Chairman, please send us back to the committee. We're meeting again next Wednesday. I believe we had a, we had a motion. We had a second. We're, we're going we're gonna to vote on sending you back. Okay. Mr. Eager. I'd like to mention, uh, Chair, that historically we've always given the property back to the owners. We That's never correct. do business with the taking property away from uh, the owners. That's all we Correct. Thank you. Come on, Mr. Chairman, you can send us out. Ms. Williams, for obviously. I just need to get a couple of things straight. Mm -hmm. You're speaking for drugs, okay? It's my understanding that the owner of the property always was given the opportunity to pay back taxes. Mm -hmm. So now, you're saying that they're buying <coughs> the property back. It's my understanding what they're really doing is paying taxes. In interest. With interest. With interest, I believe. Oh, yes. Okay. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so now, you're representing drugs. Well, no, I'm saying. Well, 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 I heard you speak on drugs. That the so-called Renaissance district down there, those people don't do anything for your authority. I just want you to know. Like okay. Taxes. They're, uh, 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 taxes. Well, he, and he's getting where this is, and I don't know who this is. And that's the one thing <coughs> I have spoken about. Listen, I have spoken about, and I have asked this time and time again. If there's anything concerning my district, I want to be the one to decide on it. Okay? But I know all about that warehouse district down there. Okay, from the beer garden to stucks and all the rest of them. And I know just what they do. Not nothing. Okay? None of them. Do anything for your father. Not a thing. Alright? So if these people want to do as as historically, this is my question. Historically, as has been done in the past, which is to pay. The bad taxes, and of course, it's not just the taxes. We know it includes the interest too. I have no problem with it. So you're just waiting for a check, okay? Is that it? Okay. Then so be it. All right. And just because drugs now wants to acquire that property, well, so that's how I feel about it. Because they've done nothing since they've been down there. None of them. Mr. Taxes. Mr. Yeah. Drake, we do have a motion on the floor that we want to vote on, so if you have something to add to it, that's fine. Well, I was just going to respond. Your rant is perfectly reasonable, except that this is the point. The point is that we're trying to get the best value for the taxpayer in the transaction at hand. Whether or not Brothers or any of the other participants in that quote-unquote renaissance have done anything for the city of Albany is not what we're debating, and I, and I, I don't mean to You're dismiss correct. your concern. So what, I'm, what Mr. Higgins and I are talking about is the economic forces right now brought to bear. And, and, and I, I, will, I disagree if it is commonplace to allow a taxpayer to be delinquent for a decade and then only after we run through the cost and time of foreclosing, then they come back and pay their taxes. I, I think at least we have this. We, we have the fiduciary responsibility to check on the value of that property. Thank you for letting us speak. Thank you. We have a, we're, we're going to have a roll call. Please. Yes, Please. absolutely. I don't call what I have to say a rant. It is an opinion, not a rant. Okay? And, and that's, that, is, that is a very offensive term. Let's, 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 let's keep, take the personalities out of this and stick to the issue. Please. Okay. Everybody. Everybody. Okay. Everybody. Okay. That's my comment. Sean, not you. Passion, please. Everybody, please. Yeah. But, but my, again, I don't know enough about all of this. If it's 10 years, I don't know if it's been 10 years. We have you know? I don't know. I don't know that either. Okay, so if we're going to speak, okay, let us talk what we do know. So don't throw things out there. Guys, That's what I'm saying. Let's stick to issues and facts and take personalities out of it. That's all I'm asking. It is the holiday season, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so.
We have a motion on the floor to send this back to committee. We have a second. This vote will be on whether to send it back to committee or not. Roll call, please. Bestin? Bestin? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Burgoff? Yes. Chapman? Yes. Clay? Yes. Clinningham? Yes. Commisso? Yes. Kraus? Yes. Cunningham? Yes. Dawson? Yes. Demolowitz? Yes. Drake? Yes. Duncan? Yes. Ethier? Yes. Feeney? Yes. Fine? Yes. Graham? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Hogan? Yes. A. Joyce? Yes. R. Joyce? Yes. Lukakis? Yes. Lockhart? Yes. Mariello? Yes. Mayo? Yes. McKnight? Yes. McLean Lane? Yes. Mende? Yes. Miller? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Reinhardt? Yes. Signorachi? Yes. Smith? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Touche? Yes. Tunney? Yes. Ward? Yes. Willingham? Yes. We will send this to the Audit and Finance Committee. Thank you. <coughs> Resolution 510, please. Authorizing a lease agreement for the rental of commercial space at the Times Union Center. Joseph oh, oh, sorry. Josephine Sapienza, DBA, Pizzeria Sapienza. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes by eleven. Authorizing an agreement for the rental of commercial space at the Times Union Center. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes by twelve. Authorizing a project labor agreement for the Albany County Nursing Home Project. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes by thirteen. Authorizing an agreement with the New York State Unified Court System regarding custodial and building maintenance services for the Albany County Courthouse, Judicial Center, and Family Court. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes by 14. Authorizing an agreement with county waste and recycling regarding rubbish removal at various county facilities. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes 515. Authorizing an agreement with Samuel Rubin Construction Services regarding general construction services for the Times Union Center concession stand project. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes 516. Authorizing an agreement with Total Facility Solutions regarding electrical construction services for the Times Union Center concession stand project. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes. 517. Authorizing renewal of an agreement with direct energy business marketing regarding the supply of electricity for various county facilities. I uh, note the extension of Mr. Stevens and Mr. Rangers. <coughs> assuming. Yes. Our choice. Our choice is ready. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution passes 518. Authorizing an agreement with direct energy business marketing regarding the supply of natural gas for various county facilities. I'll note the extension of Mr. R. Joyce and Mr. Stevens again. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution passes 519. Authorizing an agreement with the Altamont program regarding employment services for TAF and safety net recipients. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes for 25 points. Authorizing the acceptance of grant funding and agreements regarding the Child Right Safe Harbor Initiative. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes for 521. Authorizing agreements with various government and community agencies regarding the development and facilitation of the Albany County Safe Harbor Critical Team. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution passes 522. Adoption of the Albany County Budget for fiscal year 2018. Mr. Green. Mr. Chairman, there's an amendment on the desk. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have a couple amendments tonight. The first one uh, relates to the uh, two additions of two auditor positions in the Controller's Department. A little bit about the Controller's Department. It's a small agency, $2 million agency. It already has 23 employees, and with the addition of these two auditors, it would be 25 employees. Just a, a, a little overview. The county uh, employment is up for the fourth year in a row in the 2018 budget. Fourth year in a row county employment is up. This is something we should be concerned about. For example, even though the, uh, the budget increase this year is $26 million, nearly $6 million of that, $5.8 million, are salary increases. So this is a call to say, let's keep an eye on, on what we're doing with salary increases. Now, uh, as you know, uh, and also with employment, most salary increases are 2%. I'm going to be speaking to that a little more in the second amendment. The justification for the auditors from the controller's offices, they want to do more auditing of sales tax. Well, this is an issue that's been around for 30 years. Okay? And as uh, there was a part-time auditor position in the controller's office that <coughs> went vacant for over a year. So the suggestion now they, that there's a critical need for two new order positions when in fact there was a vacant position for an order, part-time order for over a year, um, has little credibility in my view. Keep in mind that the controller's office added a $75,000 job last year as a project manager. That was another addition to the controller's office. And uh, it's a $2 million agency that has 23 employees, so that's plenty. Uh, if we're really going to get a handle on employment, and I, I think there's a red flag here because we've increased employment for four straight years, we have to begin with the most obvious places. And to me, this is the most obvious place. These two no new auditor positions are not warranted, and that has an impact on, I think, on the rest of the county on how we manage our, work our workforce. So I would urge uh, everyone to vote for this amendment and make a statement that we are really serious about managing our workforce. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mendy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't know if a second is needed, but you got my second if it is. We, um, we, we don't need a second for anything. Very good. Uh, it's a with the court. We're good. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Every year, middle of the year, Paul goes out to all the department heads <coughs> to do the, to get ready, you got to do the budget. And almost without exception, the call is always for you need to do more with the same or less. That money is tight, you really can't add to staff, it's not only as the salaries, but it's the benefits and so on and so forth. Yet here we have a situation where, as Mr. Grimm points out, we've had a, an issue with sales tax for a number of years. And the comptroller comes to us and says, I need more people in order to do the job. Well, the comptroller needs to stand up, just like all the other department heads, and say, we're going to tighten our belt, we're going to do the job, we just have to manage it better. I applaud Mr. Grimm for his amendment. I think it's time that we let everybody have a fair playing field when it comes to staffing. We can't ask some department heads to say, yeah, your, your workload went up 5%, but I'm sorry we can't give you any more people because it's not in the budget. <clears throat> Let's be consistent. Let's be fair. I'll be voting yes on this amendment. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Charles. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Grimm and I serve on the, the Audit Finance Committee, and we are of a like mind on this resolution. Um, I, I do find it a little disconcerting that Thoreau had a part-time position of auditor throughout the course of the year and never filled it, never asked to fill it, and then is asking for two new positions. So I will be supporting this and then I think it's fiscally approved. Thank you. Mr. DeMalos. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, uh, the two new auditor positions uh, from the controller's office uh, was presented, I actually presented that uh, so that we can try to get more, generate more of our sales tax revenue and fees and revenues that are due to county. The, uh, the, auditor, the two auditor positions, as we talked about it with the controller, 
said if you got two new order positions and they'd be up to tenfold your salary um, um, just doing orders, bringing monies back to, that are all to all we have. So <coughs> these positions are more than paid for themselves. I have a problem with $40,000. I think it's not enough money. I don't think I don't think you can get uh, an auditor fresh out of scanner for forty thousand or college someone's you know, at least fifty fifty five. Yeah. Uh, so I hope we fill this one. With respect to the part time position, there was a person in that position for about a month month and a half who had to leave because the insurance would work out. Yet then he hired two other people that were going to go into that position, and that fell through. So it wasn't like it wasn't a lack or a lot of initial work in offering these positions. We had actually people in those positions who were going to work, but they worked out. And he since been trying to refill it, and there were some uh, issues with the insurance. That's how that happened. But I mean, I think that an auditor will make money, will bring revenues back to all the accounting and money that are due. This respect to the $75,000 employee last year. That consolidation with all the municipalities within the county saved the municipalities and counties millions of dollars. So that was money well spent. So I, I hope that uh, we vote now on the amendment and support the two auditors because they will be good for Albany County and they will go after uh, the people who aren't paying the fees to Albany County that are due us now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Miles, Mr. Higgins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's okay, I'm just going to talk generally about all three amendments since they're somewhat interwoven. I raised this issue in caucus last week, and I will raise it publicly on the floor tonight. I agree with the amendments. I don't think we should be funding new positions, let alone uh, grossly exorbitant raises for certain people on the county workforce when others are not seeing similar pay incomes of the like size. I think it sends the wrong message to our workforce that certain get these large raises and other ones do not. There was a raise by the executive in the budget for a commissioner that we denied. And yet we get two deputy commissioners. No, I believe, I believe that was put in by the finance committee by right, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Yes. Well, for Eugenia. Yeah. No, no, the no. commissioner was Oh, not okay, well, that's great. That's what so, so. You know, these uh, new decisions and these raises total over $100,000 that we're going to have in the county budget. At a time when, quite frankly, the local sales tax revenue is going to continue to dip with a budget that is balanced with a one-shot uh, revenue raiser contingent on the sale of the hockey facility that will not be here next year, along with um, you know, the swiping of the casino uh, the casino money that we've taken to balance the budget. Adding to the county budget uh, now, given the fact that next year we could have these larger issue problems. Uh, I had an issue, issue two years ago in the, in the uh, budget when we were giving out large raises to some of the county-wide elected officials and others. Uh, we did work out a compromise there, here. Uh, we have not, so I'll be constrained to vote for the United States my colleagues to do so in light of the incoming fiscal uh, constraints we apply next year. Thank you, Ms. McQueen. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, one thing that I did want to clarify is that uh, I believe that the county over the past 15 years has shed literally hundreds of positions Absolutely. and employees. And uh, I, I, think of, I think approximately over the past 15 years. So um, I, I do, I had a problem two years ago um, when there were raises put through for elected officials. Um, you know, they're above the 2%. I think those are elected leadership positions obviously should show an example. Um, I do see a purpose in auditors. Um, these are just two positions. It's, we're not adding hundreds of positions. Um, I'm still, you know, a little, I, I heard the names, I, I spoke to some people um, at the comptroller's office um, regarding the raises, uh, the purpose for them, and uh, um, I will be, Voting, I believe, yes for that, um, and yes for the, um, uh, I will be voting against the first two amendments. The third one, I'm a little, but uh, I just want to clarify. Yeah, the misnomer that we have here, we have not shed hundreds and hundreds of positions. In the county, we have kind of dark belts. I'm told that the net increase in employees is six. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Grimm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, for clarification, page 32 of the budget. It lists what the county employment is, and for the fourth year in a row, county employment has gone up. So there's not, you know, there's no gray area there. Well, county correct me if I'm wrong. Is, is it 60 increase? Well, I, I, I'll refer you to it. No, page 32. You can often refer to it because we all get county budgets. It is six though this well, year, correct? It's it's the the total for the last four years has gone up each year. This year. That was my point. Six. Now we got It is. Thank you. <laughs> Thirty. By the way, the answer is thirty. Okay, if you check, if you check page thirty. Thirty from year to year. Yeah. Seventeen to eighteen. Page thirty-three. Twenty-five thirty-seven to twenty-five sixty-seven. By my math, that's thirty positions. Okay. Secondly, I'm, we, there is no guarantee that these auditor positions are going to produce any income. We don't know that. This sales tax issue has been around for a long time. The controller really hasn't apparently done an effective job in recouping that, that lost money. And we reward that with two additional employees. What kind of business operates that way? So there's no guarantee that we're going to get additional income for jobs <coughs> in the department that ha apparently sufficiently hasn't been able to recoup the sales tax that is due, or due, due the county. OK, just a matter of clarification. Yeah. I'm looking at page 33. And the 2017 budget is 2,561, and the proposed 18 budget is 2,567, which might be six. Well, I'm looking at page 32, so you can just move your eyes to the left. 2017 is 2,537 total employment, 2,567 and 2018. Yeah. The only thing is clear, Mr. Chairman, is that employment is going up. Would you agree? Employment has increased, yes. Okay. I, did, I was trying to clarify it. The number is Well, we just relevant. clarified it. Okay. The, the beauty of this legislature is we have line item ability, and we're going to vote on this amendment right now. So without further ado, Mr. Uh, may we have a roll call on the, on the uh, First Amendment by Mr. Green. Best thing? No. Bullock? Yes. Bergdorf? Yes. Chapman? No. Clay? No. Clinahan? No. Comiso? No. Kraus? Yes. Cunningham? No. Dawson? Yes. Damalowitz? No. Drake? Yes. Duncan. No. Ethier. No. Feeney. No. Fine. No. Grimm. Yes. Higgins. Yes. Hogan. Yes. A. Joyce. No. R. Joyce. No. Macacus. No. Lockhart. No. Mariello. Yes. Mayo. No. McKnight? No. McLean Lane? No. Mendick? Yes. Miller? No. O'Brien? No. Reinhardt? Yes. Signorachi? No. Smith? No. Stevens? Yes. Touche? No. Tunney? Yes. Ward? No. Willingham? Thirteen yes, twenty-five no. The amendment number one fails. Amendment number two, Mr. Grimm, do you speak on that? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> uh, this also concerns the controller's office. There is a proposal to raise three of the top assistants there by 12.4% pay raises. Each of them to over $108,000 a year, once again, in a small $2 million agency. Um, by the way, the county executive knocked those down to 2%, two, 2%, which is what my proposal is tonight. 
to convert those raises to 2%, which is, by the way, what mostly every other county employee is getting. There's no justification for this, these large of an increase uh, up to $108,000 a year. As many of you know, that is more than most of our department heads make. So we have free assistance in a, in a small agency making more than most of our departments. Uh, I don't know who, who believes that's pay equity, to use the term. So um, I'm knocking these, uh, my proposal is to knock these pay, uh, raises back to 2% where they belong. There's nothing worse on morale for people, for <coughs> county employees to be working hard all year long, getting a 2% raise, and looking at the, reading a paper and see that three political folks are getting raises up to $108,000. It's bad for morale across the board. It's the kind of thing that we have to stand up to and make a statement about. It's, if we have passed this amendment, that it's an important statement about what kind of, how we operate as a county. And it's certainly a, a statement to the employees, many of whom have worked very hard and are happy to have their 2% pay raises. So I think these three raises are out of whack, and it's important that we make a strong statement today to reduce those payments, uh, those raises back to 2%. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Green. Take a one roll call on amendment number two. Bassey? No. Bullock? Yes. Bergdorf? Yes. Chapman? No. Clay? No. Clinahan? No. Commisso? No. Kraus? Yes. Cunningham? Yes. Dawson? Yes. Demolowitz? No. Drake? Yes. Duncan? No. Ethier? No. Feeney? No. Fine? No. Graham? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Hogan? Yes. A. Joyce? No. R. Joyce? No. Lacacus? Yes. Lockhart? Yes. Mariello? Yes. Mayo? Yes. <coughs> McKnight? Yes. McKnight? Who's he? Yes or no? <laughs> no. <laughs> McQueen Lane? No. Mendick? Yes. Miller? No. O'Brien? Yes. Reinhardt? Yes. Signorachi? No. Simpson? Smith? No. Stevens? Yes. Touche? No. Tunney? Yes. Ward? No. Willingham? No. I have 18 yes, 20 no. Amendment number three, Mr. Drew? Uh, no, uh, Mr. Drake's taking it. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Drake. My apologies. Thank you. Ms. Nolan Fraser would be the worst of our cities tonight. We'll be all right. <laughs> so I'm back at it again. Happy holidays. We tried this last year. I'll try it again. We're asking the employees of the county to uh, bear with as minimal raises as possible. We're asking department heads to minimize the uh, number of employees that they have and do more with less. I'd like to set the example as a legislative body. Uh, I think we are uh, able to, in this case, forego our raise this year. I'd like to apply it, not to Meals on Wheels this year, because that wasn't popular, but I'd like to apply it to the tax stabilization reserves. We'll put it away for a rainy day. In that way, we're able to give back directly to the taxpayers because someday when that money is called upon, it's going to come out of that fund. I urge you all to vote yes on my amendment to contribute the legislative pay raise to the tax stabilization reserve. Thank you. Mr. Greg, I'm told by counsel that this, this uh, resolution is out of order due to the fact that this body passed a resolution authorizing the raises several years ago by resolution uh, for this session of the legislature. And it was author authorized uh, raises of, I believe, 3% per year for the four-year term that we are presently in. 
and it cannot diminish the settlement. Why is it that we can't, I'll ask Mr. Jeffers, why can't we undo, we can't undo legislation that the legislature did? Do you know why that is? And I'm not being antagonistic, I'd just like to know. Because suppose we had 29 Democratic legislators in the Republican County executive in the second year of his term, he had been giving them a hard time, and they decided to reduce his salary and also salaries in his office. It's not the same thing. That's why I'd say this. I wouldn't know anything about being a minority. But that's the reason. So that the person is not the same. But I don't, yeah, I, I don't view that, I mean, to back over the peanut gallery, I, it isn't the same thing, uh, in a sense, because it's not like we're saying we're going to give your staff and this guy's staff and that guy's staff, we're going to reduce their pay raises. We're electing to do our own pay raises, all as a body. You cannot do it in an elected public official. Of any kind, even when the elected official is voting. That's correct. That's particularly why it's can't because if you could do to reduce, you would also be able to do increase. Okay. Hey, Mr. Reed, you. Well, it might be legal. Is it okay to add if, uh, if all our colleagues individually give back their raise they don't want? They can do whatever they want with their raise. So, Mr. Trade and whoever wants to give the salary back, raise. They will donate. How do you go about doing that? Next, Mr. Joyce. Mr. Joyce, I think, has a blueprint for that. So all our colleagues know how to do that. And they can go further than that. They can do what Mr. Riley do when you're you over salary back. So there's a couple of things for you to do. The new people here don't want to wear it. So I don't want to be directed to show them they can't do this. So anybody can do this if they want to do this. No, I believe that I believe it, 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 it's illegal aspect of it is that they do have to take their salary, take the check, and then they can, on their own, Mr. Joyce, you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, donate it back, as most of us do. Uh, I think everybody here donates back to charities with, with the clear. proceeds. We can still do that if you want, but we can give the money back. That's correct. Can I correct that? You're yeah, right. once you have the money, you can, get, you can do it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Grimm, I think you were next. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you. Uh, we did the same thing last year. In this legislature, during this current session, we had an amendment that would uh, cut the raises for the county <coughs> legislators. So can you explain to me why you, you it's against the law this year and it wasn't against the law last year? Because I think you caught me at a weak moment last year and I've been advised by council that, that the resolution is out of order. Oh, I see. So, so the, it, the view of the chair has changed. The, the, the view the hasn't changed. Well, I, I, why were we allowed to vote last year? You caught me by surprise last year. What can I say? You well, be honest. well, I think you had it right last year. So I, I think we ought to vote. This is a legitimate issue that every 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 member should have to, have to stand up and say where they stand. As far as giving the money to charity, it's still taxpayer money being spent. It's ultimately is the issue here. It's a way of reducing it's a way of reducing some tax money. Mr. Drake. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think functionally speaking, as Mr. Yutri said, you could give your money to charity, but that's not what I'm proposing here. And everyone gives to charity, particularly sure. around the holidays. I think everybody you all will. Well. What we're talking about is giving to the taxpayers, which that may be charity, but in the end, it's their money. So it's not charity. It's a refund, right? Just like when we had the, the casino money. We said, hey, why not give it to the taxpayers? And this body said, no. What we're proposing is not something we can do out of a paycheck, because if Mr. Jeffers gives me $453, first I'm going to pay uh, the federal government, then I'm going to pay the state government, right? And then whatever's left over, I can give to somebody, but I can't give it to the tax stabilization fund, right? Unless there's a mechanism I don't know about. Yeah, but Mr. Drake, just as I got smarter in a year, so did you. Last year, you were looking to give it back to a charity, uh, Meals on Wheels, I believe. We're both getting better. We are. <laughs> 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 Look at that. But still, the fact remains that. <laughs> We're trying to set examples. Where I stand is, let's set an example. We're all asking all the budgets to tighten their belts, and we stand here and vote ourselves a pay raise, right? Well, not vote, but we pass it for the pay raise. We're, we're I think it stands to reason that it's, a, it's an example that we should be following when we're asking of everyone. Mr. Gray, just for clarification, uh, because everybody has an opinion here, the, 
the resolution was passed by the previous legislature that allowed us to receive raises. Uh, they must have thought very well of the incoming body to do that. Uh, but it, and that's the, the mechanism by law that we have to follow. Well, thank you for your time. You, you're welcome. Just to talk about previous years, like, I think I was the one from Bob Ford that after a five year effort to raise the salary of every one of the county legislators in this room. I think you I know, recall that. Is that all right? I recall and, uh, Yeah, yeah, I think it That was painful. That was painful. We were making $12,288 a year. And I think it's here one of the stuff we should be making just a little less in the cost of living allowances. That's time for this. And I think we did the same thing, never hired the non-union employees. So we've been consistent with that. We don't ask for special anything. Travel advances, food, lodging, or nothing ever. That's all the legislators get per year. It's whatever Mr. McCoy and the budget thing he should have. And I think it's honorable what we do as a job. I'm proud of our work. And I think an increase at this time would be fitting. Thanks Thank a lot for finding the budget mm -hmm. and get over just a point of clarification. Do you know how much approximately is in the tax stimulus reserves right now? One point seven million. Well, it's reappropriated. This proposal. One point seven million plus about sixty million that are otherwise reserved. No, 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 no. That one point seven million was spent on it's, the tax issue. Yeah. What? It's gone. That's gone. How much is in our overall reserves? I guess. Like Sixty million. That's debatable. Sixty-nine. Sixty-three. Well, some of it is restricted. It's restricted. It's, it's probably real money is probably what, 40? 40, 40, 40 something. Yeah. Was the last I heard. Yeah. Anything else? Mr. Ethier. I just want to clarify one thing. I never said give it to the chair. I said give it back to the council. I never said give it to the chair. Mm -hmm. Find a way to give it back to him. Look your way. Maybe I pay for checks or something. There's a lot of ways we can do things. I've never said to give the chair and to give it back to the pounds, and you turn that back to the tax. Thank you. Mr. Mollick. Just briefly, Mr. Chairman, for those of us who've been on that a little bit, you know, there were years when our budget wasn't as uh, strong and our sales tax revenue and revenues weren't as strong. And this legislature <laughs> did set an example when county employees weren't getting raises. Uh, this legislature didn't get any raises. Every county employee is getting 2% this year. Got 2% last year. There were years where you didn't get raises. There were years when there was a race to the bottom. And we were cutting and cutting. And these offices were well, to, the bare, to the bare bones. We have a department that had was there to attest to that. There's times the DBW didn't have enough people out there that you should have had. Because it kept on cutting and cutting and cutting. And now, for the last five years, uh, things, the economy has been good. Things are going great in the county. Everybody's been getting the 2% raises. The unions all got their contracts with their raises. Uh, there's nothing else. Everything's running great. Uh, so now, all of a sudden, to say, well, we're not going to give anybody any raises, to me, doesn't make much sense. But if you are inclined, the Culture Work and Citizens Club, we do a fundraiser every year for St. Jude's Hospital. So, you know, Keep that in your in your, your checkbook if you want to make a donation. You'd be more than happy to accept it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> okay, uh, so Amendment 3 has been ruled out of order by the chair. We'll move on to the original resolution 522, which is the adoption of the Albany County budget. Well, the long roll call on that please is the original resolution, Mr. Hayden. Yeah, you see that Absolutely. So, just for the record, I'm just clear. I'm going to vote the budget. I'm going to support the budget. Uh, I have some serious concerns about this one shot revenue proposal to sell hockey facilities in the air. The land, the lease back division, I took the head of the board. Given the fact that there is no proposal, well, what's going to happen down the line? That being said, the county executive did provide us with some assurances that he's working on this. And yes, we need plans on how we're going to relocate that facility or build a new facility. And I found his answers to my questions to be satisfactory to the point where I'm comfortable voting for this. That being said, on the races, I want to make it clear that I support our workforce, I support our negotiation contracts for them, 
I support the bridges. I don't want to see the bridge you stole on any workforces. I would never bridges. think that. Now, some people would. I simply, you know, take my job seriously as a steward of our county taxpayer dollars. We have some serious issues that are going to happen next year. This budget relies upon the sale of hockey facilities. It relies upon the use of our casino tax stabilization funds. Uh, our hotel occupancy tax formula, that does not change. We have a major issue funding the uh, Times Union Center, the operations down here. These are not little problems. They are looming on the horizon. They are coming up in the next six months, especially in light of that hot tax. So that being said, I just want to ask you to support the proposal. Uh, you know, we can't let the bad be one of the issues good. We do have to continue to fund county operations, and I respect that, and we do what we have to do to approve budget and a financial plan. I'm not comfortable with everything in here. Uh, I do want to work closely with the county executive next year on whatever this grand youth uh, employment workforce program is. I recognize that we as legislators and some really wonderful things here. I think it's important to know because the city delegation that we put money aside for summer youth recreation programs in this budget. Now all we need is for the city to step up and allow us to spend that money help children who live in the city not be a hindrance to how that money is spent. That is a positive in this budget. So, uh, you know, while I'm critical of some of these issues, there's a lot of positives. That's one I just want to highlight. And uh, hopefully in the next couple of months, like we do with your finances and hotel tax, we can work with the city on how we can open up city parks to allow us to uh, have these programs here for our constituents to benefit from much like many of the children in the municipalities do. Uh, so that being said, I'm Thank you. Mr. Gavalos. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise in support of the six, $678 million Albany County budget, our fifth time that we're under the tax <coughs> uh, And that's, I like, I like to take a bow for everyone in this facility right here and in this room because without you, we wouldn't have ever got there. Uh, and that's what everybody can. Uh, this budget has no layoffs. Uh, it, it, it continues to deliver services to the most needy in the poor of Albany County. Uh, it's got 2% pay raises for all non-union county employees. It's got $250,000 in the land bank. So Albany County can still be at the forefront of land banks in the state going, I'm told, from, from Adam. Uh, so we're, we're setting the bar high and we're doing it. Uh, and, and I would just like to say that we probably had I, I believe we did have the most open and transparent process in the state, any government in the state, as far as this budget. You know, we, we have all of our agendas out there online on our website for everyone to review. We, we televise our meetings, tape them, uh, so anyone can go and look at them at any time they want. Our public hearings are, are, are taped and televised on our website so anybody can have see what they want. Uh, in the budget and how it affects that. We're, we're live streaming it right now as we're voting for this budget, <coughs> debating this budget right now. So uh, I, I would say that this budget, the 2018 budget, is by far the most transparent budget that I've ever been a part of my, my years here. But we couldn't have got that done without our staff. Our staff did an outstanding job uh, putting this all together. The members of the Finance Committee put all the hard work into it, being there. The members of the legislature came to our meetings and asked the tough questions, the good questions of our department heads when they came in. Uh, this is what it's all about. This is why everybody in this room understands our budget. Uh, they know our budget very well. And uh, so we do, when you do make your vote tonight, you really have a good handle of what's in it. So I hope everyone supports this budget today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, you, you just stole my speech. Oh. And I want to <laughs> thank all the people that I wish to thank. I want to thank uh, the, the county executive gave us a, a pretty good budget to work with. And I know that we may have some differences in a few line items, but there's thousands of line items in this budget. And we're down to about five or six that we're actually debating. And, and Mr. Chairman, Mr. Demolowitz, I wish to thank you for your time and effort. Uh, you, you thank the staff, you thank all the legislators who put a lot of hard work and effort in this. You didn't thank yourself, and I want to personally thank you and everybody else for their efforts. So with that, I'll ask for a long roll call on the original budget, not the original budget, the 
what an appointment was. Thank you. Festin? In favor. Bullock? Yes. Bergdahl? Aye. Chapman? Yes. Clay? Yes. Cunningham? Yes. Commisso? Yes. Kraus? Yes. Cunningham? Yes. Dawson? Yes. Demolowitz? Yes. Drake? Yes. Duncan? Yes. Edia? Yes. Feeney? Yes. Fine? Yes. Grimm? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Hogan? Yes. A. Joyce? Yes. R. Joyce? Yes. Lukakis? Yes. Lockhart? Yes. Mariello? Yes. Mayo? Yes. McKnight? Yes. McLean Lane? Yes. Mende? Yes. Miller? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Reinhardt? Yes. Signorachi? Yes. Smith? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Touche? Yes. Tunney? Yes. Ward? Yes. Willingham? Yes. 38, yes. This, uh, I want to congratulate all of you. I believe this is two years in a row that we've had a unanimous uh, decision on this budget. And that doesn't come easy, I know. But it, it's because I believe that we're all working together as one here to get this done. I want to congratulate you because I've been here for well over 20 years, a few, t few years over 20 years, and, and never did it happen before last year. And now it's happened two years in a row, so congratulations to all. Thank you. With that, we have resolution 523. Appropriation of amounts contained in the 2018 Albany County budget. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Resolution passes 524. Amending resolution number 259 of 2017 regarding the conveyance of real property located at 57 Central Terrace in the city of Cahove. No, Mr. Sigaracci's abstention. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Resolution passes. 525. Well, we already did that. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Thank you all. Have a good night. <laughs>